Welcome to another episode of the podcast with me, your host, George Jintang Kwamadipilo, and this is my Two Cents, a Zambian Case Law podcast. The citation for today's case is Godfrey Meander versus the High Court of the Republic of Zambia, 1989, Zambia Law Reports at page 62, and it is a Supreme Court judgment. The area of the law that this particular case focuses on is whether or not the Supreme Court of the Republic of Zambia has the power to hear a matter on first instance. Secondly, the area of the law that this case is looking at is can an order be given by the Supreme Court of the Republic of Zambia against a High Court judge requesting that the said judge perform his duties which are to deliver a judgment and hear the matter and these two questions are bordered basically on civil procedure the brief facts of this case were as follows godfrey meander had commenced a civil matter in the high court of the republic of zambia now when he commenced this matter he was the plaintiff meaning he had brought the matter before the High Court. Now the case hit a road bump in the fact that it was pending for over eight months. Now Mr. Meander unhappy with the situation that had arisen and due to the fact that there was a delay and a failure by the High Court to actually dispose of this matter, he then decided to make an application to the Supreme Court of the Republic of Zambia. Now, the application that he made was leave to appeal or to apply, sorry, for an order of mandamus. Now, let me just stop right there because that is a bit um, of a legal term. Now, basically, an over an order of mandamus is basically an order requesting an administrative body or an inferior court to perform its function or fulfill their duty. So mostly these orders are used in what is known as judicial review. So this is why you're reviewing a decision of the government, such as the executive. This is why you ask the president, the minister, to perform a specific task. And Meander was in this instance going before the Supreme Court for the first time to say, can you order that the High Court judge seized with my matter, determine the matter, and deliver judgment? The Supreme Court of the Republic of Zambia, before hearing the said application that had been raised by Godfrey Meander, decided to first of all ask itself a very pertinent question. Whether or not it had the jurisdiction to actually hear an application of such a nature. Now, the Supreme Court phrased it as whether or not it had original jurisdiction to hear an application for an order of mandaminas directed against the High Court of the Republic of Zambia. The second issue that they also had to determine was whether or not they had the right or the authority to issue an order of mandaminas against a judge of the superior courts for failure to perform their judicial functions. So these were the issues that the court thought were of pertinent importance to decide before they could go on to hear the matter. The Supreme Court came to a conclusion that based on the Constitution of the Republic of Zambia, which at the time was the 1996 amend, no, it wasn't the 1996 amendment, it was the 1971 um, Constitution, which was a one party, and section seven of the Supreme Court Act, it had no authority whatsoever on first instance basis to actually hear this appeal that had been raised to it by uh, Godfrey Meander on the basis that it was an appellate court or appellate court, meaning it could only hear matters on a second basis from the High Court to the Supreme Court. The court further went on to state that it had no right to hear matters on first instance, which I have explained. 
on the fact that it was an appellate court. The court also concluded and said it had no right to grant an order of mandamus against judges of the superior courts in the performance of their duties because the court had no jurisdiction in the sense that the court had no right given by any law which governs the court for it to make such orders now in coming to this decision they looked at the federal supreme court of the federation of rhodesia and nyasaland and they stated that in that court which is now an extinct court the constitution gave the federation of rhodesia and nyasaland supreme court the right in which to give an order of mandamus or prohibition or an injunction so under that law the supreme court of the federation of rhodesia and nyasaland was not just an appellate court but it had original jurisdiction but our supreme court did not or does not have original jurisdiction hence the supreme court came to the conclusion that that application by mr mianda was ill conceived on the basis that the court had no jurisdiction because based on the law the definition of what it can do was that of appellate matters and this application was not on appeal it was on first instance the court also went on to define what the term jurisdiction is jurisdiction can mean two things it is the right for any court to hear a matter as prescribed by an act of parliament or the constitution and also the right to entertain a matter that has been commenced before it and take cognizant or be aware of it and that you still have to have the right to hear the matter therefore mr mianda's appeal not appeal sorry mr mianda's application for an order of mandamus asking that a high court judge be ordered to hear the matter and determine it did not work it failed on the basis of the fact that one the court had no jurisdiction and two the court could not order a superior court judge to perform their judicial f- My two cents talking points on this issue will be broken down into two. First of all, we must look at what the Supreme Court was trying to educate us on this aspect. The Supreme Court was basically trying to say each and every court in the Republic of Zambia is a creation of the constitution and an act of parliament. It is these two provisions and also the rules which regulate the commencement of procedure of each and every court so it is these two and the rules that in essence create the basic structure of a court and it is these two that strictly give out the functions powers and the duties of the court therefore parliament actually stipulates what functions a court is supposed to have and as such if parliament wants they can give the supreme court of the republic of zambia powers to listen to any matter if they feel like so this case brings out in first instance the structure that a court has in a democracy that they ought to work in accordance with the law that whatever they do is based on the law and that whatever matters each and every court will hear including the supreme court is provided for already and there is guidance and they cannot go beyond that guidance this is why you will hear people say oh they have no power to hear this matter and as such this matter is set aside because they get their authority from an act of parliament and the constitution and those provide what matters they can hear further the supreme court's jurisdiction in our country is limited to that of appellate jurisdiction 
this is more evident in the new constitution of the Republic of Zambia, number two of 2016, where now the Supreme Court is of, uh, of an appellate nature because you now have the Court of Appeal, which is a safeguard between the High Court and the Supreme Court. However, our Supreme Court cannot listen to certain constitutional issues such as interpretation or election petitions or parliamentary election petitions, those are of a constitutional court nature because the constitution has described what the Supreme Court can hear. So clearly now the Supreme Court is an appellate court and being an appellate court means it can only hear matters on appeal after they have been heard by previous courts below it. Therefore, commencing a matter in the Supreme Court on first attempt is not legally acceptable. It's not. They don't have the power. The other talking point that I want to bring across is the emphasis that the Supreme Court had on the jurisdiction. That they get their power from the law. So before they can hear any matter, they have to make sure that they have the right. So Parliament gives them those rights. And that jurisdiction is not just about hearing a matter, but also allowing that matter to be before you and being aware of it, that there is an application that has been made in a formal procedure and that application is acceptable before you. Lastly, the issue of whether or not the Supreme Court can issue an order of mandamus against a judge of the superior courts in the performance of their duties is something that can't be done if it's on first instance unless you bring it up on appeal yes but besides that case which is still not possible what this means is that a judge can never be sued by a plaintiff respondent defendant with regards to the performance of their functions This also means a judge cannot be a party to a matter. So judges of the court of appeal, judges of the constitutional court, judges of the high court, and judges of the supreme court cannot be sued in the performance of their functions, regardless of whether there has been delay in the matter. You can't sue them. That is what this case of Mianda versus the high court brings out. However, The mere fact that you can't bring them to court does not mean you can't still make other applications to hold them accountable for their job. The constitution and the judicial code of conduct, number 13 of 1999, provides for the other avenue. Under section 24, you have to make an application to the Judicial Service Commission. Your argument would be on the fact that there has been a misconduct you are alleging against one of the judges of the superior courts and they will take up the investigation. When you look at the constitution under article, oh sorry, yes, article 144.1, it is clear to say that the removal of a judge may be by the judicial complaints commission or you make an application to the judicial complaints commission. So, The Judicial Complaints Commission, I think I said the Judicial Service Commission, I think the Judicial Complaints Commission is the body that deals with this issue when it comes to the misconduct of a judge or if the judge has acted in an acceptable manner, such as there has been a delay in court matters and you feel they're not right for the job. But in the performance of the judicial functions, the courts have no jurisdiction whatsoever because parliament hasn't given them that specific jurisdiction to deal with issues of removing a judge or ordering a judge of the superior courts. But you can still order a judge, or you can still order a subordinate court magistrate to perform their duties because that order of mandamus is against them as an inferior court. But because the high court, court of appeal, constitutional court are higher courts, they are known as superior courts under the constitution, you cannot sue them. You have to make applications to the Judicial Complaints Commission. 
So that has been today's case on the jurisdiction of the Supreme Court of the Republic of Zambia and on the aspect that judges cannot be sued in court in the performance of their judicial duties where you feel they have frustrated the process that you need to take other avenues in order to report them. So we'll be back next week with another episode. This is me signing out. Bye. Thank you.